Okay, let's get into some order statistics. Order statistics are super fun. Um, whenever we have a random sample that is x1 through xn, which have um, all the same distribution and they're independent, so this means iid, um, and in particular, when we talk about order statistics, we're thinking of uh, a random sample from a continuous distribution. So um, these are continuous random variables. So continuous random sample. Um, order statistics help us um, define things like the median or the range and so on of the data set. So here's what what we define the order statistics to be. So if we have a random sample x1 through xn, um, we just sort them from smallest to largest, and then we give them a new notation where we put the index in parentheses. And when we put the index in parentheses, we're, we're talking about the sorted values. So x1 is always gonna be the smallest one, x2 is the second smallest one, xn is the greatest one, and we call these the order statistics. So after we sort our data, uh, we have the order statistics. So we might think about how we can uh, define some interesting um, things, uh, statistics using, sorry, I want to have this, um, using order statistics. For example, um, the range, um, I'll index it with the sample size n, the range we could write as the largest value minus the smallest value. So um, in terms of order statistics, then I've got, um, I've got the range. Um, we might talk about the mid-range. Uh, I myself forget what, <laughs> what the mid-range is. Uh, this is when you, you take the average of the smallest value and the largest value, sometimes that's interesting to look at. Um, you could talk about the, the median um, and how we typically or conventionally define the median. Depends on whether you have an even number or an odd number of, of um, values in your data set. So if you imagine you've got like, um, like five values, n equals five, for example, um, You'd have your order statistics like this. Um, they don't have to be evenly spaced. Uh, so you've got your order statistics, and you would call this one the median because it's in the middle. So, um, so if you have an odd number of values, you take the middle one, and so we can get that by um, we can do n plus one over two order statistics. So. Um, if n is 5 and I take n plus 1 over 2, I get 6 over 2, which is 3. Um, if n is even, then what we uh, often do to get the median, or what we like to call the median, is like the, um, the midpoint between the uh, middle two. So we would call this midpoint between the middle two our median, and so we can get that um, as if I take n over 2 plus x n over 2 plus 1 and divide by 2. So just imagine if n is 6, then 6 over 2 is 3. And then um, 6 over 2 plus 1 is 4. And so I would take the average of those two to get the, the median. Um, Okay, or you could you could imagine quantiles um, of the empirical distribution function also as order statistics. I think we worked that out before. Um, so uh, yeah, we can define these these statistics that we use all the time uh, with order statistics. And then uh, where we're headed with this is um, can we find the sampling distributions of these? So sampling. Um, distribution of, of these and other functions of order statistics. Okay, so um, here's a formula that looks complicated. This is a formula for the PDF of order statistic K, where K is just um, 
like any any integer between one and n. So um, if k is equal to one, uh, if k is equal to one, then I would be interested in the minimum. If k is equal to n, I'd be interested in the maximum. But k can be anything one up to n, and so I might want to know like what is the distribution of this um, kth ordered value. All right, so here's the formula. If I if these are the order statistics um, from a random sample uh, coming from a distribution with CDF big F of x and PDF little f x, the PDF of the kth order statistics order statistic is given by this kind of crazy looking formula. So I want us to spend a little bit of time deriving this so that we can sort of make sense of it. And then we'll do some examples. So um, I need some more paper. Okay, so um, weird, what's happening? Um, sometimes everything disappears. So I want to get, um, I want to get the PDF of um, the kth order statistic. Let's begin by finding the CDF. Begin by finding the CDF. So the CDF of the kth order statistic um, is like probability that the kth order statistic is less than or equal to little x for any little x I want to put in there. Uh, why, do, why do we begin by finding the CDF? It's really too complicated to directly find the PDF. So if I find the CDF, then I can differentiate the CDF with respect to X and get the PDF. Um, so let's put together the CDF. Um, to put together the CDF for this, um, it's nice to kind of draw a picture. So let's say we've got our data um, and we imagine it on in the real number line. Um, let's say here's little x, here's x k plus one. Um, so the event that the kth order statistic is less than or equal to little x kind of looks like this. Um, or we could also have, um, we could also have if x k, sorry, if the kth order statistic is less than or equal to little x, um, it could also look like this, or it could look like this. So basically, x is anywhere up above the kth order statistic. Um, and I can put this event into words. Basically, if the kth order statistic is less than or equal to little x, kth order statistic less than or equal to little x, it means, um, it means at least k make sure it's writing clearly, at least k of x1, at least little k of the values in my random sample, which are x1 through xn. Let me um, get this out of the way. At least k um, are less than or equal to little x. At least k of them are less than or equal to little x. Okay, so um, we kind of know what to do with like at least k. That is sounding like um, something we've seen before. Um, let's think about it. For each value in the sample, um, I can I can record whether or not it's less than or equal to little x. And if I make a new random variable which just counts how many of these are less than or equal to x um, and call it y, so if I say y is the number of x1 through xn which are less than or equal to little x, then I can write this CDF as the probability that y is um, at least k. Pencil's going a little bit wacky, um, like that, like this. So, okay, so y is the number of these random variables in my sample, which are less than or equal to k. Let's think about what distribution this random variable y has. I'm just counting. My x1 through xn are independent, so um, 
and each one of them is like either less than or equal to x or not. So if I'm counting, I really have a binomial thing, a binomial random variable. So this is, um, if I consider it a success when um, x uh, is less, when I get a value less than or equal to x, then I'm doing n trials, and the success probability is the CDF um, of the population distribution evaluated at little x. Okay. So I can write this, since y is binomial, I can write this as a sum of binomial probabilities. So little y beginning at k and going up to n. And then I just put in here the binomial probability mass function, where this is my success probability, f x x. Um, that's raised to the power of y. And then 1 minus f x x. Um, move this stuff over raised to the power n minus y. Okay, so this is the cumulative distribution function of the kth order statistic, the CDF. Um, and we got there by being clever and writing this event out in words and realizing that it's like a binomial sort of thing. Um, we're just counting how many of the values fell below little x. And for the k the order statistic to be less than or equal to x, we need at least k of the values to be less than or equal to x. Not so hard. Now, um, to get the PDF, I have to differentiate with respect to x the CDF. Okay, so I've got to take d by dx of um, this whole thing which is not looking like tons of fun, uh, but let's see, let's see what happens, see where we get with it. Um, I can pass this derivative operator through the sum, um, so I'm gonna get sum y equals k up to n, n choose y, and then I've gotta use like the product rule here, so let me differentiate the first one, this is going to be raised to y minus 1. Then the chain rule gives me this coming out, because when I take the derivative of a big F, um, I get little f. Let me do it like this. Um, and now I'm, I multiply by this other function, n minus y. Plus, now I'm going to leave the first function alone, and I'm going to differentiate with respect to x this function and so I get um, n minus y coming down from up there now it goes to n minus y minus 1 and then from the chain rule I get um, I get negative um, f of x coming out let me move my minus over here though okay so I'll just make this whole thing a minus okay now, um, this looks a little bit nasty. Let's, let's do this. Um, I've got this whole sum, um, y equals k up to n. Let me break this, um, break this apart and um, just start writing out the different terms. So let me write out the y equals k term first. Um, so you get n choose k, and then you get k, and f x x um, to the k minus 1. Um, then this part, 1 minus f x n minus k, and then I'm going to bring this down and put it on the end. Okay, and then I have minus, i got to do this part, um, f x to the power k, n minus k, 1 minus f x, x, n minus k minus 1, and then this, and then I still have all these other terms, so y equals k plus 1 up to n, um, all this stuff all over again.
Okay. And now, um, in the interest of not taking up too much time in the lecture, I'm going to um, I'm going to just say that if you if you spend the time you know, okay let's bring in X here if you spend some time um, and I think your book has all the details this whole thing is equal to zero so all of that um, if you simplify it you get some cancellations and the whole thing becomes zero and so you're left with just this part which we're gonna um, we're gonna come down here and simplify just slightly um, I get n factorial and then k factorial and minus k factorial but then I've got a k and then I've got this other stuff copy paste um, and now this um, k and this k factorial, if I let them um, kind of, the k cancels with the first k in that k factorial, and so I get this. Um, it simplifies to this. So if you can show that, um, that this whole big thing is equal to zero, then you're finished because what's in this box, um, that's what we had back in our try this see if it comes back that's um, that's this formula okay um, this one right here okay so um, the fun part of this was was writing down um, the CDF and understanding that it has a connection to the binomial so um, okay so we did that at least we did most of it um, and so now let's let's do a simple example. Let's say I've got a random sample from the uniform 01, and I want to find the PDF of the kth order statistic as well as its expected value and variance. Okay, so number two. So let's say I've got U1 through UN. They are independent uniform 01, and I want to find um, PDF of U K, where that's the kth um, largest or the kth value when I order them from smallest to largest. All right. So what I first need, um, I really just need to to put this together, but I need the ingredients first. So my little f, um, I guess we'll we'll put U. My little f is just going to be one, but I've got um, I want to indicate its support as being between 0 and 1. And then my, my big F um, to put in here is going to be the CDF of the uniform, which is U. And let me just write in words for it over the support um, for U between 0 and 1, because CDF is always 1 if U is greater than 1. It's always 0 if U is less than 0. Okay, so I get um, for the kth order statistic, I'm just going to continue using u for the argument because I, I don't really feel like writing um, u little k everywhere. Um, it's kind of cumbersome, so I'm just going to put u. But I'm indicating um, here in the subscript that I'm writing down the PDF of the kth order statistic. Okay, so I get... Um, n factorial k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial then I get um, from this part I need to put u I have u to the k minus 1 then 1 minus u from this part to the n minus k and then I just have the PDF um, which is 1 and I've got um, that it needs to be between 0 and 1. So this is the PDF of the kth order statistic. Um, if we look at this for a moment, we should, uh, th we should see that it looks like a beta distribution. It has support 0 and 1, and then it's like u, and then 1 minus u. So um, 
if I write this as like plus one minus one, then it it really looks like a beta distribution. Um, okay, so but let me leave it as it was. Um, okay, so I've got u to the k minus one, one minus u to the n minus k plus one minus one. And then if it were a beta distribution, I would have like um, gamma function of k and then gamma function of n minus k plus one. And then I would have gamma function of the sum, um, I would have um, k plus n minus k plus one. And it turns out that is what we have because um, if I look at this, those k's cancel and I just get um, n plus one and then I get gamma of k, uh, gamma n minus k plus one, u to the k minus one, one minus u, n minus k plus one minus one. Let me put this indicator here. Um, okay, so this n factorial is gamma function of n plus one, k minus one factorial is gamma function of k, gamma function of n minus k plus one is n minus k factorial. So um, so the kth order statistic from um, a uniform zero one random sample happens to follow a beta distribution where my alpha parameter is k and my beta parameter is n minus k plus one. Um, so if I want the expected value of the kth order statistic, I could just use mean and variance formulas for the beta distribution. So um, I know the mean is alpha over alpha plus beta, so I get k over um, k plus n minus k plus one, so I get k over um, n plus one. And then the variance is gonna be something more complicated because um, that's like alpha oh I'm, I'm, I might have to go look at it it's alpha alpha sorry I wasn't prepared to pull it up um, I th let me write out what I think it is and then I'm going to double check when that window opens um, should be this so we get um, get stop 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 Here, go away. Here, I'm telling it's not doing anything. Thanks. Um, okay, if I go to my little distribution summary sheet, then I get um, yeah this whole expression. So you want to simplify this, um, and you, you'll get something. Okay. So what's kind of fun to do is um, it's fun to run a little simulation and um, see if your work is correct. So um, let's say I, I draw uniform zero one random samples, keep the kth order statistic every time and make histograms of it. Then I could also consider overlaying the, the true PDF and just um, kind of check my work. So. Let's do that real fast. Um, so let's pick a sample size, like n equals 10. Um, let's generate a bunch of random samples. So I like to use s as like uh, the um, number of simulated data sets. Then um, let's make k be like three. So I'm looking at the third order statistic. Then I can write a loop where um, I get, I guess I'll call it u, r uniform uh, n. So this will draw n values from uniform. I'm going to sort them so that I automatically get the order statistics. Then um, u k is going to be um, the k uh, entry in this vector. So let me um, make an empty vector with, um, with s, um, spaces in it, and then I'm going to put in space s 
the um, the kth order statistic. So if I do that, now I should have a hundred realizations of the kth order statistic. And so if I do a histogram of UK, then it should show me a beautiful plot over here. Um, there it is. So now maybe to check our work, what we could do is plot um, the PDF of the corresponding beta distribution. So um, I need to make sure that my histogram um, is on the the scale of the density so that the area under the bars sums to one um, so that it's on the same scale for plotting a density. So now uh, here's how I like to plot a density. Let me make um, a sequence of values from like 0 0.01 to 0.99, say length 99. So um, I want to, I want to, this is a sequence of values over which I want to plot the beta PDF, so d beta um, u, and then my shape, shape one is, if I go look at my, my work, um, oh stop, I don't know what's going on, um, if I look at my work, I've got um, alpha is k, so that first shape parameter is k, and the second shape parameter is n minus k plus 1, n minus k plus 1. Okay, good. So this is, um, this is my, uh, my PDF. Um, uh, that looks bad. Um, uh, the, this is my PDF. Uh, PDF of you. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So now uh, plot PDF of UK against you. Okay. And I get this. And so what I really should have done to add it to my um, plot is uh, is lines. Okay. There we go. So maybe it will look better if I make this like a thousand because then I'll have a really lovely histogram um, and then I, I plot this. So, so we got it. Um, our work appears to be validated by, by this. Um, okay. So let's go back and learn a little bit more about order statistics. Um, yeah, here's just some, some prettier plots. Um, that you can easily make. So um, this is kind of cool. It, so if you have a sample of size 10 from uniform and you take always the smallest value that has a density crowded towards zero, if I always take the fifth one, that's pretty much in the middle. Um, and if I always take the ninth one, that's kind of crowded over here to the right. Okay, so let's just do another one. Um, let's say I've got um, an, a random sample, um, independent random variables with the same CDF, that just means random sample, um, and the CDF is given by this. Find the PDF of the kth order statistic. So, um, so I know the kth order statistic is going to have um, whoops, this PDF, um, n minus k plus one factorial, and um, k plus one factorial. I, I've got, I'm just copying down my formula again. This is, this should be k minus one. You can tell I haven't memorized this formula. I don't expect you to memorize um, this formula. So let's go up and look at it. Yeah, that's correct. All right, so what is the missing piece? I have, I've got my CDF, but I need to find the PDF corresponding to the CDF. So my CDF is, um, is this, and so my PDF is the derivative of this CDF with respect to x, so I get, um, Um, 1 plus e to the minus x minus x squared 
put a minus and then um, then I get e to the minus x um, coming out, but, but then another minus, then another minus from the chain rule. So I get e to the minus x, 1 plus, put this pencil, um, 1 plus e to the minus x. My Apple Pencil is held together with tape right now. Um, okay, still functioning, but barely. So uh, there's that, so I just got to put it in. So n factorial k minus 1 factorial n minus k plus 1 factorial. Then we've got um, 1 over 1 plus get this, all raised to the k minus 1, 1 minus that whole thing to the n minus k minus 1. And then, then I've got this squared. Okay, there it is. Um, I think there are some ways to simplify this a little bit more nicely, um, but maybe let's not worry about that for now. Um, so you could you could draw samples from this CDF and record the kth order statistic like we were just doing, and make histograms and so on um, to draw samples from this. Uh, I don't think there's a built-in R function to draw samples from this distribution. It's called the logistic distribution, but um, to get values from this, um, so to sample, um, you could do what? Find the quantile function, find quantile function, and then pass um, uniform zero one RVs through um, through it uh, to get random samples. So I did that, and I'll just show you the plots. Um, this red curve is the the PDF. So this is just um, it. It's this PDF when you just draw one value, and then this one, um, this blue one, is the PDF of the kth order statistic. Um, from a random sample of size 10, so n equals 10. And so when you take uh, the smallest every time, you wind up getting values down here. Um, when you take uh, the fifth one, you get values kind of just left of center. Um, when you take almost the biggest one, you get these values. So that's fun. Um, what about the minimum and the maximum? It turns out if I make um, if I make k equal one or k equal to n, uh, that really complicated formula for the PDF of the order statistics for the PDF of the order statistic gets a lot simpler, um, and uh, we can actually derive pretty easily these expressions. So the first one, this is the minimum, has CDF this. PDF this, the largest value has um, this CDF and PDF. We can fairly quickly uh, derive these using similar arguments. So let's look at um, let's look at the CDF of the first order statistic. This is probability that the first order statistic is less than or equal to k. So or not less than or equal to k, less than or equal to x. So here's x. Here's my first order statistic. Um, so I need the I need x to be anywhere up above. So um, I could let's say here's my second one. Here's my third one, all the way up to here's x n. Um, I could have x anywhere above this. So if I want to put into words this event, x1 less than or equal to x. That means, um, it means um, at least one of x1 through xn is less than or equal to little x. Okay, at least one 
Um, and so if y is number of x1 through xn less than or equal to little x, y, as we've said before, is binomial n um, with success probability given by the CDF. So this is probability that y is at least 1, which is 1 minus the probability that y is 0, right? Because y can be 0, 1, 2, up to n. And so we get 1 minus um, the probability that y is 0. Um, so the probability that y is 0, this would be like n 0. Remember, the let's write out the PDF of y. Um, n y f x raised to the y 1 minus f x raised to the n minus y. So probability that y equals 0 is when I plug 0 into this thing. Plug 0 into this thing. Um, so n choose 0 fx um, raised to the power 0, 1 minus fx raised to the power n minus 0. So I get 1 minus, this whole thing is 1, um, 1 minus to the power n. So I get that. That's um, exactly what we see there. And, and now it's actually kind of easy to take the the derivative of this, I don't have a bunch of extra terms that I need to work hard to, um, to show that they cancel. So um, this, if I take the derivative of this thing with respect to x, I see that I'm going to get n um, f x to the power n minus 1, and then I get f x coming out. So this, these minuses, um, or wait, oh uh, no. Be careful. Um, I get uh, minus n times 1 minus fx, all of that to the power n minus 1, and then I get um, minus fx x coming out. So these minuses cancel, and I get n 1 minus f x to the n minus 1. I get this. Right? Yeah. That's what I get. Okay, and then um, you can do similar things for the the maximum. You can just easily show it. So um, for the largest order statistic, I have the largest one less than x k. This means um, this means all x one through x n are less than k, which means it's the probability that y equals n. Okay, remember this is um, this is the number which are less than or equal to k. So y equals n, which is um, n choose n, fx, all of that to the power n, 1 minus this guy, oops, n minus n, which comes out to this to the power n. And so then... Um, if I want the PDF, I take the derivative of that with respect to x. So my n comes down, and I get this. Um, right? Yeah. OK, so those aren't too bad. Let's, um, let's play with this little example. I think I need more paper. OK. So uh, let's say I've got exponential an exponential random sample. Let's find the PDF of the maximum and also the PDF of the minimum. So um, so I've got um, x1 right clearly x1 through xn are independent and um, the PDF is 1 over lambda e to the minus x over lambda, um, where x is greater than 0. And um, the CDF, remember I've got to integrate this. I'll put t 
and if you because this is area under the curve to the left of little x uh, you wind up getting this if you do that in that integral this is as long as you have x greater than zero you get this okay so um, which one am I doing first the maximum um, is just oops um, it's n I'm going by this formula right here it's uh, n times this guy 1 minus e to the minus x over lambda to the n minus 1 and then times the PDF 1 over lambda e to the minus x over lambda um, and that's for positive values of x okay there's not really any nice way to simplify this one let's look at the um, I guess I'll put the word and um, and the PDF of the minimum so if I always take the smallest value in an exponential random sample then um, I want to use uh, this formula I want to use this formula for this formula it's ugly um, I want to use this formula and so um, here I've got 1 minus this so it's 1 minus this so 1 minus 1 minus x over lambda all of that to the power n minus 1 and then the PDF oops um, x greater than 0 okay and so if I if I simplify this, I get n to the e minus x over lambda to the n minus 1. And then I've got, um, let me put this lambda over here, e to the minus x over lambda. Let's see if there's a nice way to simplify this. Maybe there's some insight to be gained. Um, minus um, x over lambda. So I've got um, I've got n minus one of these, and then I have minus another one of them. And so let me write it like this. Okay, um, I'm just putting for some reason this n is coming down to the denominator in the denominator. And then I'm going to write minus x. Um, I have n lambda well, let me write it like this one um, I'll keep it like this for one more moment um, okay if I bring these together I get minus x n over lambda and now I I recognize that this is like another exponential distribution so um, if I take lambda over n e to the minus x divided by lambda over n um, so um, x1 follows an exponential um, where the scale parameter is now lambda divided by n, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so um, that's pretty good. So continuing our journey with order statistics, now um, we want to know uh, about the joint PDF of two order statistics together. So remember at the beginning we were looking at like the, um, the range um, or the mid-range, that is these ones, and if we hope to get the distribution of the range or the mid-range, I, I need to know the joint distribution of these two order statistics together. So we have this kind of scary formula, which is the joint PDF of two order statistics. And uh, we're not going to derive this, but I do want to just kind of make, make a heuristic um, argument for it, or just try to make sense of it by drawing a picture. So the idea is, so we've got this random sample of size n, or 
order statistics are x1 through xn, think about the joint PDF of xj and xk. So j is the smaller one, k is the larger one. Um, and we get this kind of crazy formula um, for the PDF. We're using u and v because it's it'd be too cumbersome to write like xj, xk everywhere. So u is standing in for xj, v is standing in for xk. And so we've we've got this this crazy formula, but I want to try to make sense of it. Um, so I'm I'm drawing a picture of of our data set down here. So um, we've got all of our order statistics on this uh, number line. Um, let's make this k minus one. Here's the kth order statistic. Here's um, k plus one, and then eventually we have the largest order statistic xn. Um, I want to try to make sense of these terms and the powers they are raised to. So um, let's look at the first one. This is kind of like the probability of getting a value less than or equal to um, the jth order statistic. And so I imagine um, or I look down on my diagram where the jth order statistic is, and I see that there are um, j minus one values, which are um, which are down there to the uh, to the left of it, and it's it's kind of why we have j minus one up here. Um, and if I look here, this is kind of like probability that um, x falls between x j and x k and uh, if i look at um, all of these values those fall between x j and x k and there are um, k minus j minus one values there okay so if i take I can get the number of values here by taking k minus j, um, and then subtract one more. And um, if I look over here um, and try to relate it to, to this, this is kind of like probability that x is greater than xk. Um, and I've got k, I've got um, n minus k values in my data set over here. So uh, I don't know, this helps me a little bit to make sense of this formula. Um, and then we've got the corresponding like factorials down here. It's kind of like we're partitioning the data into these groups. Um, and then, um, you know, from taking the derivative of the joint CDF, we get these PDFs out. Um, okay, so let's just practice using this um, in a Kind of simple example. So let's say I've got uniform zero one, <coughs> and what I want to do is get the joint PDF of two adjacent order statistics. So um, so x k and x k plus one, and let's use u to represent x k, v to represent x k plus one. Okay, so um, the joint of um, u and v where u is the kth order statistic, v is the k plus one-th order statistic, is going to be like this. I've got to use my formula. Um, let me copy and paste this so that uh, we don't make any mistakes. Uh, copy, put it here, paste a picture of it. Um, OK, a little bit. Now, um, let's try not to get confused. Um, this is for for j, <laughs> excuse me, j less than k. Uh, so everywhere I see j, I'm going to put k. Everywhere I see k, I'm going to put k plus one. So uh, let's be careful. Uh, so this, okay. Now I'm going to get k minus one factorial. Then everywhere I see k, I'm going to put k plus one. So k plus one minus k minus one from here. And then um, n minus k plus 1 factorial. 
and then I'm going to get um, PDF. PDFs of uniform is just one times one over the support. And then um, remember the CDF of the uniform is just x um, for x on the interval 0 to 1. So here I'm going to get um, I'm going to get u raised to the power okay, j minus 1. Everywhere I see j, I'm going to put k. So I'm going to put k minus 1. Then I've got v minus u. Everywhere I see k, I'm going to put k plus 1. Everywhere I see j, I'm going to put k. 1 minus, this is v. Everywhere I see k, I'm going to put k plus 1. And um, we have to be very careful when we are looking at the joint PDF of two order statistics. Remember, the for the larger index, I always have um, like xk greater than or equal to xj. Um, so there's always this condition on the support. Order statistics, by definition, are, are ranked. So um, I have to have v greater than u. If I put into this PDF um, v less than u, the PDF needs to give me 0 back because I can never have xk less than xj when k is greater than j. Okay, so um, let me make sure there's room for me to write. Um, u has to be less than v has to be less than 1. Sorry, that's getting really tiny over there. Um, Okay, so why, why again is u less than v? Because xk plus 1 has to always be greater than xk. Uh, so let's try to simplify this thing. Um, k minus 1 factorial. All of that's going to go away. Then I've got n minus k minus 1. Then I've got u to the k minus 1. This is all raised to the power 0, so it it's just going to be 1, and then I've got 1 minus v raised to the power n minus k minus 1, and then I've got 0 u less than v less than 1. Okay, there we are. That's the joint PDF of those two order statistics. So we could uh, run another fun simulation um, and, and make a scatter plot of these values. If you do that, um, you'll get this kind of scatter plot. So here's order statistic 2 of 10, here's order statistic 3 of 10. So k is equal to 2. So we see that um, that um, x3 always exceeds x2. Okay, so they have some kind of relationship. <coughs> All right. Um, Quite often, when we are interested in the joint PDF of two order statistics, we choose those two order statistics to be the minimum and the maximum, x1 and xn. When we do that, our expression simplifies a lot. Um, so let's see how that, how that happens. Um, if I grab this guy, OK, if I, if I make. Um, j equal to 1 and k equal to n. Let's see what happens here. I get n factorial, um, 1 minus 1 factorial. From here, n minus 1 minus 1 factorial. From here, n minus n factorial. Then I get these two densities. And then I get from here, um, j minus 1, that's 1 minus 1, so this goes away. I get here n minus 1 minus 1, so I get um, this guy, n minus 2. From here, I have k minus k, so this term goes away. So I get this, and then it's good to put... Um, an indicator, um, oops, uh, u less than v, u less than v. Okay, <clears throat> so 
Let's do one last problem. Let's let x1 through xn come from a uniform 0 theta. So let's draw a picture of what, what that PDF looks like. 0 to theta. Um, so if it's from 0 to theta, it's flat over that interval and it takes the height of 1 over theta so that it integrates to 1. Let me make it a little flatter. Um, OK. And so the, the PDF is going to be 1 over theta. And the CDF is going to be, um, if I put an x here, I want this area. So that's going to be x over theta. And let me just put for x in 0 to theta, because that's the support. OK, so uh, let's, let's see this. I want to get the joint PDF of the minimum and the maximum. And after that, I want to find, ultimately, um, the PDF of the range, which is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. Um, but to get there, I'm going to find the joint of x1 and xn. Then I'm going to use the transformation method to find the joint of r and m, where r is the range and m is the maximum. And then um, I'm going to integrate m away to find the marginal of, of the range. So let's do that. Um, all right, so. First, the joint PDF of x1 and xn. So I just need to follow this formula um, where, let me pull these down, where this is my PDF and this is my CDF. So copy, paste, so we can look at them. All right. So I've got um, x1, xn, and I'm going to let u stand in for x1, v stand in for xn. So I've got, um, oh, and all of this stuff, I guess I didn't really simplify that. Um, that's equal to um, n factorial over n minus 2 factorial, which is n times n minus 1. So we've got n times n minus 1. Then from here, I've got 1 over theta, 1 over theta. From here, I've got v over theta minus u over theta to the power n minus 2. And um, u is less than v is less than theta. OK, so let's simplify it a little bit. Um, I can pull out of here this 1 over theta raised to the power n minus 2. And then I've got two more thetas out here. So let me just put it like theta to the power n and then v minus u to the n minus 2, um, u, v, theta. OK, now step 2 towards getting the PDF of the range is to get the joint PDF of r and m. OK, so joint PDF of r and m. So um, let's make r in terms of v and u. Well, let's write it out like this. r equals xn minus x1. xn minus x1. m is xn. OK, first step is getting the joint support of these two. So the random variable pair rm um, can take values rm such that what? Let's think about it. Um, it's important to, to note that the range can never exceed the maximum. So um, x1 is always positive, and so the range is like, it's like m minus x1. So the range um, can never exceed the maximum. And the maximum can never be greater than theta. And um, the range can never be less than 0. OK, so I think we're good on the joint support.
Now let's get our Jacobian. So this is like, let's let V again stand in for the max and U stand in for the min. <laughs> Excuse me. That's why I'm recording this lecture. Okay, so um, G1, U, V, G2, U, V. And now I've got to get the inverse transformation. So V is equal to M. Um, U is equal to M minus R. Um, because I would write U is equal to V minus R and V is just M. Um, right, so I get the minimum by taking the, yeah, that's right. So this is G1 inverse M R. This is G2 inverse M R. So we need some more paper. Now we get our Jacobian. So Jacobian um, M R um, D by D R D by D R D by D M D by D M. And so I'm going to put M minus R M minus R M M and I'm going to get, when I take those derivatives, um, minus 1, 0, 1, 1. So I get um, minus 1. So the Jacobian doesn't really play any role because I'm going to take absolute value of that. So now um, R, M, the joint PDF of R and M is, um, I'm going to write this down this part um, n n minus one theta and um, let's see v is m so everywhere i see v i'm going to put m and then i'm going to put um, m minus r in place of u that's raised to the power n minus two and then i've already studied the support so i'm going to put zero r m theta like that and so let me simplify n 1 minus n or n n minus 1 oops this is that theta is raised to the power n um, and so I just get r raised to the n minus 2 um, 0 r m up to theta Okay, and that's the joint. And so now um, the third step is uh, let's find the marginal of R. Marginal, let me be more specific, PDF of R. So F R, I need to integrate the joint. Um, I need to integrate across M. So that's um, M has to be greater than R and go up to theta dm. And so I get um, n, n minus 1 theta to the power n, R to the n minus 2. And I'm just going to get theta minus R. Okay, when I integrate with respect to M, this whole giant thing is a constant with respect to M. So, um, and if I consider the marginal support of R, any possible value I could get for R, the range, um, I could get, um, I could get anything from zero up to theta for my range. So, um, so I, I guess we can leave it like this. We have in words the support. So if I simplify it um, cleverly, I can put n n minus one. Let me put r over theta to the n minus two, and then let me leave one theta there, and let me put one minus this like that. Um, 
for some reason I like that. Uh, the reason is that um, this is this is like showing that R follows a kind of scaled beta distribution. So um, this R over theta it looks like a beta, but then from from the scaling we get an extra theta out here. Okay, so that's the marginal PDF of R. Um, so that's kind of kind of nice. Um, if you, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to R and run a little simulation because that can be fun. Um, so let's pick a sample size n. Let's let's make it like I don't know twenty this time. Let's run one thousand simulations and. Um, I want to compute the range each time, so let me make an empty vector in which I'm going to store the range every time. So simulation one through big S. Um, I'm going to grab uniform. Um, this is zero to theta now, so I need a theta. Let's make theta equal to like two. Um, okay, and I like to clear the workspace. So there's, there's no ghosts floating around. Um, let's sort so that I get the order statistics. And then R is going to be x n minus x1. OK, but I want to store it in position s of that vector. So I'm going to do this. Let me actually make the range make n a little bit smaller. Let me make, make it like 5, sample of size 5. So if I do this, and I make a histogram of my ranges, um, I get this now. Okay, so this is from a sample of size 5. Theta is equal to 2, so we see range gives me values between 0 and 2. It can never be greater than 2, and it seems kind of humped up here because, um, yeah, I guess range, it, it, range tends to, um, I don't know, this is the behavior of the range. Okay, so um, now let's overlay the density. So frequency, I want it to be a, a density type of histogram. So let's make R a sequence between 0 and 2, length a couple hundred, and then um, I want to do the marginal PDF of R. It's going to be n times n minus 1. So I'm just typing, typing this up now. Um, over theta times r over theta to the n minus 2 times 1 minus r over theta whoop, um, to the, that's not to the anything. Um, so I get this, and now I want to I do lines, add lines to my plot at r, r. Um, good, so I'm glad that it follows my histogram. Um, so that's kind of fun. If I make n, if I make n really big, let's see what changes. Um, then it looks like I'm crowding even closer to to two. It's like the larger I make my sample size, the more likely it is for me to get values, um, minimum and maximum values, closer to zero and closer to two. And so, um, so then I'm let's make it. Um, so then. I get ra a range more close to the the actual range of the support. Okay, and then let's see. Um, there's just some some other output that I ran. Okay, we are done introducing order statistics.